So I was about to start this video with a typical dad joke, something along the lines of why are these two songs so lonely? Because they have no one. Oh. I'm sorry. I mean, it's appropriate for the topic and it's not funny at all. So I thought, why not? But then I heard a way worse joke. <clears throat> why did the washing machine go to prison? Money laundering. Just roll the intro. I should probably apologize for that joke, but hey, it's in the past, so what's done is done. Anyway, in this episode, we're gonna talk about two songs. The Self, by one of my absolute favorite drummers ever, Richard Spaven, featuring Jordan Raquet, and A Moment in Time, by my man, Ashley Gibor, Avishai Cohen. Don't you love it when people, for some reason, assume that if you were born in the same country as someone else, that you have this kind of special bond. Ma, he's one of us. Ze mishelanu, achi. U mishelanu. I mean, I never met the guy. Um, so both these songs have a very similar thing going on, in which they have no beat one. They do have beat one, I mean, the music needs to start somewhere, but it's never played, which makes things pretty funky. Let me explain. Oh, but before that, I'm starting to write a long-form course, and I need your input. But more about that at the end of the video. So, when we're presented with a piece of music, the first few notes we hear carry a lot of new properties that we need to analyze, let's say. We basically need to go from nothing, so silence, no tempo, no key center, to something, some musical content that potentially has both. On the harmonic side, for example, I may present a pad that can be assumed to be the tonic, because I never gave any other context, just to later be revealed as, I don't know, flat 2, for example. And now, when you know what the actual key is, you can hear that pad appropriately, I mean, in retrospect, with the correct amount of tension that comes with that degree, the flat 2. Look at me being fancy and talking about harmony. Rhythmically, we have the same thing. If a rhythmic pattern starts with a rest, we simply can't really know that unless we have some indication of some kind of context before it, like a metronome or a counten or something like that. We start analyzing things once we hear something. So if the first note in the pattern is a rest, we can't really account for it. So the first hit that we're gonna hear is gonna be the starting point for the analysis. And it's very common for us to think about it as beat one. But if during the song we get some musical cues that suggest that it's not beat one, that's where we can start fishing for other perspectives. So this pattern, for example. I assume you hear it as this. But in my head, I wrote it like this. So by having a rest in the beginning and not showing it to you ahead of time, I kind of mess with your ears a bit. Okay, let's get back to the music. The first song, The Self, sounds like this. So we have the two hits, followed by some ghost notes, and something that pretty much sounds like a backbeat. Now, I don't know if this song makes you feel rhythmically uncertain, because, I mean, it's kind of weird, but for me, that repeating backbeat kind of blows the cover off this groove and reorients me appropriately to hear it like this. I would call this a slow 6-4. A, because I like counting slower, and B, because it's the best time signature around. But you may count it as three bars of 4-4 four four in double time. And that's fine. We can both coexist. As you can hear, the first hit hits on the second 16th, and the second one on beat 2. And the snare hits on beat 3 of every bar. 3-4-1-2-3-4-1-2-3-4-1-2-3-4-1-2-3-4-1-2-3-4-1-2-3-4-1-2-3-4-1-2-3-4-1-2-3-4-1-2-3-4-1-2-3-4-1-2-3-4-
The vocals here are super airy and loose. I love it. So they don't really pull you towards any rigid rhythmic perspective. But for that, you'll have to go to listen to the song on Spotify. I'm trying my best to not get demonetized again because, uh, you know, I too enjoy the perks of getting paid and affording things. The feeling I get from the song is very fluid, flexible, and even wobbly. Ditching beat one and favoring other beats can have that effect, and I freaking love it. So go listen to this song, and actually go listen to all of Richard's stuff, because I said so. There's a song that Richard plays on called Toko. There's a very weird drum groove going on. See if you can figure that one out. Yala, moving on. A Moment in Time by Avishai is a bit trickier. This one is also in 6-4, which is the best time signature again, no wonder this song is so cool, with a 16th note subdivision, so 24 subbeats. So 6 quarter notes, 4 subbeats each. The main pattern here looks like this, 5-5-5-5-4. So assuming this starts on beat 1, as I said at the beginning, I can orchestrate this in a very simple way on the drums. I'll play hi-hat on the quarter notes, 2 and 4 on the snare, well, 2, 4 and 6, I guess, and I'll add these hits on the kick drum. But this is sadly, or actually gladly, not the case. This pattern is the pattern played, but it's all shifted one subbeat to the right. So beat one is a rest, as expected from the title of this video. And I came to this conclusion for two main reasons. The first reason is that I get a general sense of this beat probably coming from the hi-hat. And second, at the end of the song, there's a version of this pattern with a straight quarter note kick underneath. I mean, come on, that pretty much seals the deal. This groove is a bit tricky and getting used to the different perspectives might be very difficult. Also, what makes the song a bit trickier is when the drummer plays the song and he plays a drum fill, he's not gonna finish it on beat one. He's not gonna emphasize beat one because it's not played and it's kind of a weak beat in this tune. So he's gonna probably just slide over it and emphasize the next 16th note, which makes it that much harder to understand. I love this concept of never playing beat one, the most important beat. And as you've heard in these examples, it results in like a very bouncy, light, nice groove. It's, it's really, really cool. I love these two artists, Richard Spaven and Avishai Cohen. Imagine what will happen if they collaborate. <laughs> That will be insane. That's it for now. And as I said earlier, I'm starting to work on a full-length course, and I was wondering if you might give me some insights. What would you guys expect or want to learn from a full-length course by me? What rhythmic aspects would you like to advance in? Is it odd meters, polyrhythms, improvisation, basic stuff, advanced stuff, I mean quintuplets, septuplets, whatever, just let me know. So if you can go to the community tab and answer the poll, that'd be great, or just send me an email. Oh, and also just mention what instrument you play, just because I'm curious. And as per usual, here is a list of the best and finest people on the planet. And you can join this list by joining my Patreon page at patreon.com slash you give goodbye. Thank you very, very much, people. You really make this all possible. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the future.